Hello, I'm Jacob. I'm the host of the show. Thank you for watching, commenting, and subscribing, and just being a part of what we do here. So, in some shocking turn of events, Bruce Arians has decided to retire at Tampa Bay's, at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers head coach. Now, if you actually listen to what Bruce Arians said when he took the job in Tampa, and you actually listen to what he, because he did, this is not his first retirement. He's retired before. In Pittsburgh, before he went to Indianapolis, became the interim head coach over there, when Chuck Pagano had got cancer, he retired from that because no one was taking him as an offensive coordinator or as a head coach. No one, he wasn't moving anywhere. So he retired. Then he got the job with the Colts. Then until he got the job with Arizona, he was more than likely going to get fired in Arizona. It didn't go very well near the end. So he ended up retiring. They gave him the ability to just retire. And that's what he did. Then he got the job in Tampa after being in the CBS broadcast booth for a year. Got the job in Tampa. Now he retired again. Retired. Not, he didn't really retire. He's retired from coaching. But he stepped down as head coach to become a front office special consultant. Basically, the special consultant is essentially a way to get paid while still being a part of the organization. If the team wins the Super Bowl, you still get a ring, all that kind of stuff. Now, t he named Todd Bowles his replacement as a head coach. Now, here's the reason why I bring up he... His when he signed on to be the head coach for Tampa Bay. He said he would probably only coach there about five years, and it was about four years that he was an actual coach there. About four years. That's pretty impressive. He was pretty much on the mug with that one. He wanted to win a Super Bowl. Well, he won one. He said, the, I will retire or leave and Todd Bowles will be the coach, and I'm not leaving Todd Bowles a bad team. And he's not. So, all the things that he did say happened. So, it's not a terrible decision. I wish we would have known a little beforehand. We ended up not. All I can tell is thank you to Coach Arians. He did a great job. Tom Brady put out a great, a great speech. Great little letter on his Instagram thanking Bruce Arians for the coach and everything like that. And people want to say like conspiracies that Brady's, one of his, Brady's exceptions to come back was they would get rid of Bruce Arians or he would retire. That's not true. It's not true. Number one... I believe Tom Brady has a lot more integrity than that. That's one thing a lot of people don't have now is integrity. And Brady has integrity. He's understanding all the success that he's had. He's had integrity. Because he still envisions himself as that six-round draft pick that has to prove himself every time. Even though he doesn't have to anymore. But he does. Because he's got integrity. But I also don't believe Bruce Arians would leave if he didn't feel like he could leave and the team would be in good hands. And so I think this... And I like Todd Bowles as a coach, as a head coach in New York. I just think it wasn't a great place for him. They didn't spend money. They didn't do anything. They weren't consistent winners. Granted, you have to face Belichick and Brady the whole time. This gives you a chance to really accomplish something as a head coach in the NFL. 
the Bills have announced that they created a 30-year deal for a new stadium in Orchard Park that's going to cost about 1.4 million, or 1.4 billion, excuse me. The official gr groundbreaking will be next summer, uh, next spring, excuse me. The completion is only going to happen in about 2026 anyway. If I'm any opponent that has to face the bills in Orchard Park, I'm like, please put a dome. Please put a roof. It's hard enough to play in Orchard Park in the summertime. It's windy. But in the winter, it's cold. Ask Mac Jones. He looked freezing. They did a Monday Night Football game. It was like 50 mile an hour winds, and he just looked frozen. And so I think it's also going to seat 62,000 open air. The quote was, it's built for Buffalo. But I, I know a lot of teams are not happy. Uh, other teams want a dome. I don't blame them. The NFL is forming a new committee. to review league and team policies regarding diversity hiring. This is not new. This is the Rooney Rule, basically, but it's revamped. The Rooney Rule only said you have to hire a black or an African-American coach. You don't have to necessarily hire him if, unless you like him. But you need to have him involved in the hiring process as a head coach. Then, the defensive, and then in the front office, same, similar aspect. This is different, however. This is going to involve black ownership, or Native American ownership, excuse me, Native American coaching. Native American GM, but it's also going to allow women coaches to gain positions, front office, women in the front office, and leadership kinds of roles, all that. The owners meeting, for years it was called the owners meeting, the owners meeting, the owners meeting. Now it's just called the annual meeting. Everyone still calls it the owners meeting, but it's now it's called the annual meeting where coaches, owners, all go. And Ron Vera and Bruce Arians, who we did just discuss, uh, were on the cutting edge of hiring women coaches, female coaches, for positions in a football team. Whether they were the wide receiver coach, the quarterback coach, linebacker coach, defensive end coach, whatever. Sooner or later, we will have the first female defensive coordinator and the first female head coach. When will that happen? I don't know, but that's a big step and you're putting yourself at the forefront because if it doesn't work... That's what's going to be shouted out. This doesn't work. We shouldn't do this. That's what's going to happen. you got to be willing to take that big step forward in order to go say, yes, we're doing this for the, the for the right of the game. For the, we're doing this for the game. And for we like her as a coach. The Steelers have decided to sign former Eagles linebacker Gerald Avery. He was a starter, decent starter. I mean, it, they've had some linebacker issues in Philly over the last few years, so we'll see what happens with him getting a new start in Pittsburgh. The Colts hired John Fox as a senior defensive assistant. What does that mean? Basically, it's where, and a lot of teams do this, it's just a role that we fill to 
finish a coaching roster. So we put you in, and you, like, the Cowboys do this. Their special, their senior assistant is also their linebackers coach. He helps with the linebackers. That's really, he's really good at. This is the same thing. What will John Fox exactly do? Who knows? But he's now back in the NFL. The Jets had another signing. Back is restricted free agent Eddie Pinheiro on a one year, $2.75 million contract. The Jets, this is not crazy. Yes, the Jets signed Greg Zerline. They want a kicking competition. It's not that hard to understand. The Dolph 